And this this one's gonna be a little more of a sad tale for you guys. This one mm-hmm. is another person that I'll be very frank, I, I forgot about this story entirely until like, we were looking up this draft again. And it's a sad story, it's one you kind of want to forget, but here we are to remind you, <laughs> kind of like jerks yeah. here. Um, and that's Tyler Sash, defensive back out of Iowa. And and he's the guy that we drafted six round, 198th overall. So obviously those kind of guys, you don't have a ton of expectations on them. They're really, um, he kind of did what you expect out of a six round pick. He had a bit part for a few years, didn't really quite make it. You know, that's kind of what you get out of a six round pick typically. Um, 2012, he was suspended for four games for testing positive for Adderall, which he said he took legally to deal with anxiety to help him with public speaking. Obviously, as a Giants player, you do have to do some public speaking. You are required by the NFL to be available to media. One of the things you don't hear much about, like some of these guys legitimately have medical issues of anxiety dealing with these kind of situations. And I've never heard anything about what the NFL does for those people in those scenarios. I mean, you got to wonder even if Marshawn Lynch, if that was part of his problem. I was going to say, he was like shy kind of guy. He just did. He just went well, up there so he didn't get fined. He said, he said he did it because the media twists his words around. But you, you, listen, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's the potential of some of that being there. It's not easy being in front of people with lights and cameras on you and asking you a bunch of questions. Yeah. Um, but so he got cut right before the 2013 season. His stats as a giant, 23 games overall, zero starts, 26 tackles, and one forced fumble. The really sad part comes a little bit afterwards there. September 8th, 2015, he was found dead in his home in Oskaloosa, Iowa, at the age of 27. The autopsy revealed his death was caused by a mixture of drugs. It was later discovered that he was suffering from stage 2 CTE at 27 mm-hmm. years old. Um now, his family did donate his brain and everything to find out information and stuff like that there. Um, I also looked it up because I was curious. Like, I don't pretend, like, we all know CTE. Like, I feel like at this point, not necessarily at 2011, you know, going back that far. But at this current present point in the NFL, players know about it. They understand a risk involved in playing. These guys didn't necessarily. But I feel like we as fans, we know about it. We know it exists, but I can't say any of us really want to be an expert because we don't want to ruin the fan experience. But I was kind of curious, like, what are the symptoms in stage two? You know, I think we all know symptoms. We talk about stages and, like, you know, things like cancer and stuff like that. We don't necessarily, this is such new stuff. And, again, a lot of fans, let's be honest, we don't want to necessarily go, like, hear no evil, see no evil on it. So stage two, behavioral outburst, mood swings, irritability. And the last one I thought was very interesting, anxiety. We go back to, again, suspended in 2012 for taking Adderall, which he said he took to deal with anxiety. Makes you wonder when he actually started getting symptoms then. You know, he might have literally entered the NFL already. With you know? stage two. Um, yeah, I mean, he might have already had these issues from his college days, high school days, Pop Warner days. I mean, people don't think about this stuff sometimes. I mean, even like again, obviously, I never made it to the level that these guys made it. Like, I'm, I'm not. I don't try to front and try to say I was very good at football. Um, I, I played a little in high school. I was a horrible player. Let's be very frank. I was the guy they put at the end of JV games just to say he got in the game. <laughs> that was my role. Um, you know, um, but I had two concussions in my day playing. And I remember them very well. It was it was like literally like black and out seeing stars and stuff like that. And that's what we used to call it back in those days, seeing stars. But for me, for somebody who played, you know, one year Pop Warner and played two years in high school and had two concussions. It makes you wonder sometimes with some of these guys how many they had in their careers. Because some people are more prone to it than others. Some people yeah. are more it's like anything injury wise. I hate to say this injury, but it's like a bruised brain kind of thing at that point. Well, it's that's not so what a concussion is. Is a bruised brain. But I'm saying it's much different. It affects you much more than a broken leg or an arm. I don't want to like uh, undermine yes. your obstacle. You know, that's that's what I mean. Like I want to kind of word my you know well, word this because I don't want to I mean you got some guys that you know they can do a crab walk, you know, MC Hammer side, you know, do the crab dance. 
back and forth. No problem. The end of so, Stanley Groove. Touche. Yes. But some people that do that, and next thing they know, they turn MC out and flip their meniscus. Oh, yeah. There's so, some people just can't tolerate movements the same way. Like, same thing with concussions. Like, sometimes some someone could just whip their neck the wrong way and get yeah. concussed. Yeah. Compared to some people that could get hit by a car and just walk off like nothing happened. Oh, yeah. I don't know. So, fat, fat skulls, thick skulls. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just glad that the NFL is now doing new helmets and stuff like that. They're taking it serious. You can tell, regardless of why, you can make the claims about them taking it serious because of lawsuits and. The movie with Will Smith that came out and that kind of I was gonna stuff, say, you know, and that came out in 2015, which is right at this time. Yeah, so you know, yeah, it was right around that time. So, uh, like I said, sad story overall, guys. So. Thanks for listening to Two Giant Goofballs, a New York Giants podcast. We appreciate your support. Thanks so much.